probably going to be a little bit of that depending upon that. that and definitely there's going to be some in between where we're going to be burning them fats and carbohydrates, right? Okay? So, does everybody agree with that? I hope you guys agree with it. So, so what do you get here? This is a table, again, from your textbook. Looking at RER as a function derived from various fuel mixtures. So, here we have 0.71 using zero carbohydrates, 100% fats. And here we have this is one using 100% carbohydrates, okay? And this corresponds to the energy values that we reported in the previous chapter of kcals per liter O2 used. But as you have an RER value that is between 0.7 and 0.1, then you get a mixture of fats and carbohydrates. If that value is lower towards 0.7, it's gonna be a higher percentage of fats. If it approaches one, it's gonna be a higher percentage of carbohydrates, okay? Make sense? So, in your, um, they haven't looked at RER in the lab yet? No. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys a question then is what happens when RER value goes above one? Because we haven't seen it yet, we're going to come back and visit that. Okay? So, tell me in lab if you see this. If you get an RER value above one, uh, will they give it an RER value? Um, in the lab this week. So we'll come back and we'll talk about that, what's happening there. You will see it. Okay, I'll just let you know. You're going to see it at this point. Okay? I don't want to talk about it because we're going to come back and talk about this. Do you have it in there? Yes. Did you see it? Nope, when will I see it? See how quick I am with the jig. Okay? So why are we concerned about this? We want to know how much energy we're using during exercise. That's the whole goal of this. So the question is, is are you using energy right now? <coughs> yes, you are. So your VO2, if we did a resting VO2 for you, it would be around 0.25 liters per minute. Okay? And so the RER would probably be around 0.8 if we did a west end one. And we can do that. We have a, uh, so we talk about the, um, the valves and the mask. We actually have something downstairs where we can actually measure resting metabolic rate. This is a guy that's super high. Great drawing, right? So we actually have this canopy system that we can actually put down, and the hose for the metabolic cart hooks up here and goes to the metabolic cart. And you can sit there for 30 minutes, an hour, and we can measure your O2 and CO2 uh, usage and production uh, during rest and come up with a value that's probably going to be close to 2.5 liters per minute, okay? Depending upon factors, did you drink coffee this morning? Were you over at the, uh, the Catholic Center stealing coffee? Did you exercise, ride your bike in this morning and could impact it? Were you running from class because you were uh, asleep 10 seconds ago uh, in your dorm room, so where you were in your apartment. How long does it take you to get to class? Right? Um, three, five so you were eventually, essentially asleep 10 minutes before class. I got it at uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Wow. So you also might see another value in mLs per kg per minute. So first of all, why would we measure VO2 in mLs per kg per minute? Normalize it for body mass. I don't know what come on means, but I'm assuming, I'm assuming that was means that you were supposed to know the answer to that question, right? So, so what's a resting value for 2.5 liters per minute? What's a, a average resting value for you? Oh, which is what? Well, let's say he's an normal 75 kilogram man. That's not going to help you at all. Right? For that value? Right? I'm just saying, you guys wouldn't be able to calculate that fast, can you? Uh, <laughs> get about 30, yeah. or sorry, 300. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. Good. Whew. You may not end up on a 
want it closer like Elvis did with mass scales like that, okay? 3.5 mLs per kg per minute would be uh, a value that you might see. Which one's absolute and which one's relative? Absolute is the... Uh, is the which one? 25 liters. Correct. And the relative one is which? 3.5. Mm -hmm. And why is it relative? Because it's normalized for kg. Exactly, so that we can compare those values between people of different body mass, right? Okay, so who would likely have a higher VO2 body mass wise? Lance or Carmel? Lance. Lance. Does that mean Lance is an um, awesome aerobic um, uh, biathlete, cross country skier, shooter? No. no. So if we were to look at their body weight, Carmel is probably likely to be better. But he probably shoots better than Lance as well, even though he professed his shooting ability was pretty good. Okay? So, basal metabolic rate. So, typically, if, if you could, we'd want you to do it in eight hours of sleep and 12 hours of fasting, okay? Laying down and in a, a thermal neutral environment. If it's thermal neutral, you're not losing heat to the environment, the heat's not adding to you. Fasting, you don't have any thermic effect of food. If you eat a big meal, that can have an effect on your metabolic rate. And so after eight hours of sleep, you've had a nice sleep and we put you down in there. So um, I, I thought Dr. Murphy did that in class. Did she do that in class? Oh, I don't know. No. She doesn't do it in there? No. Okay. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, we could do it downstairs with the cards um, and look at your basal metabolic rate, but we don't often do that. So. But there's obviously a minimum energy requirement for living, and Carmen is just meeting that right now, based upon the fact here in the back of the, the thing. Is she is just getting the sleep that she needs and is only using the energy that is can get her to class. Would you agree with that? Um, I know. Efficiently. That's good. That's why we have you in the class. Because you are a physiological, <coughs> right? You guys all are, okay? So, the resting metabolic rate, you guys can look through this on the slides. We want to get to exercise. So obviously, metabolic rate increases with exercise intensity, okay? And that's a, we wouldn't know that. You have to have, if we're going to fuel uh, a uh, body that is now moving faster and is doing skeletal muscle work, we're gonna have to fuel it with ATP. ATP, we're gonna have to increase metabolism. You so, um, oh, sir. That's it for this lab. That's it. So, That's all we got. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's going to be what's going to happen. So, so if we were to look at O2 or VO2, which is oxygen consumption, what would happen to it during exercise? It's going to increase, right? So if this is VO2 here on our graph, and let's say it's in liters per minute, so that we're correct. And let's just say that this is time. Now let's let's change it so we're increasing. Yeah, we'll go with time, but we're increasing. I'm going to increase that because I don't want to exercise intensity. We were talking about. Okay. We'll reduce the part of our axes, which we're going to sort of. So if we're having an increased intensity, what would happen to our VO2? What would it look like graphically? Increase, increase, increase. It's going to increase, 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 and it just keeps going up and up, Austin? No. What's going to happen at some point? Wait for your threshold, essentially. How much you can actually move? That's So you're going to flatline at some point, right? So you have only a finite ability to use oxygen consumption, right? Okay. What's that based upon? Lung capacity. Okay. Lung capacity. Lung capacity. Pump, heart, delivery of oxygen to where you need it to go, skeletal muscle. What else? So we're talking a lot of stuff here, right? So why aren't you... So Hannah's the only one that's an elite athlete in here, right? She plays soccer, I don't miss anything. Is anybody more elite than Hannah in here? What do you do? No. <laughs> that makes you elite. 
Um, biathlon. Is that cross country skiing and shooting? Um, if you were, uh, it's kind of like that. Um, if you were uh, an elite athlete in biathlon, you wouldn't be here right now. You'd be in Korea. So, once again, the only elite athlete you understand. Uh, unless he just values his education just that much, he promises. Most people he, don't. He <laughs> promises dead mama that he would finish school. I hope his mother's not here. So that's just. <laughs> I'm still going to go Hannah as the elite athlete in here. The rest of you are all punks. So, Hannah, congratulations. I can to take you. her talk. You're yeah. elite athlete. So. Um, so, a lot of things going on here that determines your ability to use O2. One of the biggest things is your genetics. So, most of you are not going to be elite biathletes because of your dead mother. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's even true. It's a, it's not, we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> no matter what happened, you're probably not going to be an elite athlete. But if you are untrained in biathlon, let's say, which you currently are, because uh, I don't even know if you can know what a biathlon gun looks like. What kind of uh, ammo does it shoot? Mm, let's go with uh, 365. Yep, that's right. Yeah, that's not right. He doesn't know. It's a, it's a 22 for crying out loud. Oh, they shoot 22? Are you talking about shooting wow. a 22? Oh, they do. Yep. Wow, I just lost all the respect that I had for my athlete based on what you were saying. I was like, dang, these dudes are awesome. I was, I was imagining like, but now it's like darts. So we are going, so here's what we're going to do. You dummies have now pissed me off severely. <laughs> We are going to a shooting range, and I'm going to have you guys do 400 meter sprints, and then we're going to come back and shoot, and we're going to see how much damn respect you have because they're shooting 22. I thought it was like I thought it was a rock in, in the rundown. Yeah. I thought you yeah. had like two shotguns. So yeah, I'm going to see how well you can actually even throw something with a target and with your heart rate at 180. Yeah, no. Um, I'm probably that's shooting not BB guns. Let know the BB guns. Are they also ice skating with BB guns? They're on skis. Have you ever shot with ice skating with BB guns? They're not ice skating, wow. they're skiing. I totally. Wow, I thought it was an awesome sport. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and keep that edge, he's also got to be a gifted cheater. So he put around him an exceptional team of medical and physiological personnel that were able to maximize his potential on drugs and mask it from people that were taking it. So should he be punished for being the best cyclist and the best doper? If, all, if everybody's doing it, is it you want to be the best doper, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, why not? If that's the way we're going to do it, is the top cyclists are still going to win. If they're all doping, for the best cyclists. Up. Now, what you get is if you're not the best, or if you're the best cyclist, and now you have a guy that's just underneath you, and doping then puts him up above that, then you, you get controversy. And that's what's going on now. Is, but wherever there's <coughs> athletics, there's going to be doping because the it's the same thing with you guys. You all you guys want is A's in this class. Would you take doping, Carmen, to get an A in this class? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure you would. You're you're doping right now, Carmen, to get an A in this class. Everybody knows that. When did stealing go up here the Athletic Center to get that? Almost counts. So. I'm not stealing it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So that's an ethic thing we can get into it. But if you're gonna do it, do it right. Cheat good, right? Don't get caught and get the maximum benefit from it. Eugene yeah. here, and I'll throw your ass out of this <laughs> But what if you cheat well? If you cheat well, it'll be reflected on the scarlet letter that's on your transcript when you leave here, okay? <laughs> so, so scarlet letter was made though. Yeah, so here, let's take a look <laughs> at VO2. So here we have oxygen uptake uh, in panel A that is different exercise <laughs> intensities, okay? So bottom one is 50 watts. Okay. <laughs> Top red one is 300 watts. Okay. So is the plateau that we see in at 200 watts, 150, 150, <coughs> looks like it's plateauing to me. So is that VO2 max? No, it's not because we know it can go higher because up here we're using more VO2 for 300 watts. So What's happening is, why do you see that plateau at 50, 100, 150, 200? Steady state. That's exactly right. So now your body is able to, with that oxygen consumption, so let's use 50 as an example, is a little less than one liter of oxygen. It can maintain 50 watts of work on a cycle ergometer. If you want to do more work, you want to go up to 100, now we have to use about 1.5 but our body will have a steady state um, where it will maintain that workload with that oxygen consumption, okay? Now, when you get up to these, you can see now you get something where this is, there's no difference between 300 and 250 watts in the amount of oxygen that you're using from minutes three, four to five. So is that <coughs> steady state? Yes, it's steady state, okay? But it could also be the physiological max is we could do any other workload higher than 300 watts, and we likely wouldn't be able to use more than 3.5 liters of, per minute. We probably reached our physiological ceiling. And if you go up in to 400 watts, let's say, what will happen? Will you get the same curve? Maybe not. Maybe you, the curve now looks like this, where it's very steep here, and then it gets the plateau quicker. Okay, and so that. You, and then you won't be able to last as long. So timing-wise, you stop with them. That's not a very good drawing. So let's do that again. In fact, that is almost a, a terrible drawing. What's happening there. So you may come up quicker, and then you, now I can't remember. The jit is failing. Comes up quicker here, steeper here, and get to this point. But now, maybe you have to stop exercise here, okay? at 400 watts. You can't get higher than that physiological ceiling. And then if you take a look at that, that's what we're talking about now with regards to this is time with different intensities. This figure here on the right, panel B, is now looking at different intensities. So we are at now 100 watts and you can see this part of the figure is what we're talking about oxygen consumption during that 50 watt or the purple figure, and then this is now the 100 corresponding, and this is now the 150 corresponding. It corresponds to this graph over here. But now we're doing an incremental exercise test where we're increasing 
uh, the, the intensity by increasing the watts, and then ultimately we get to a plateau or steady state. That's still a steady state, but where we can't go any higher in regards to our oxygen consumption. We've reached the physiological limits of our body in using oxygen, okay? And so no matter how much workload that we get put in here, we're gonna stay at that plateau as it continues down if we're maybe out here at 400, okay? So that would be VO2 max, okay? What if, we, if you just stopped right here, and this is a value that we had, and is that a VO2 max? value? No. You guys say no because you're seeing this data and you can see the plateau. But what if this data wasn't here? Now, this point here is you stopped exercising. You couldn't go any farther than, let's say, about 180 watts. Is that your max? You don't know. You don't know if you could have gone farther. You don't know what the capacity is because you didn't see that plateau. There's other factors that we'll talk about in lab too that determine VO2 max, okay? But what would that value be right there then? If you had a test that you got to there and you didn't see a plateau in VO2, what would you call it? Wouldn't be VO2 max because you can't guarantee that they couldn't have done it's more. Max. It's VO2 peak. Oh. Okay, so that just happens to be a peak value that you saw at that test, but you didn't see enough criteria to say that it's a max. And you might see that in lab going forward, okay? So that's what you guys will be looking at. So you'll also see if you do this, sometimes there's gonna be things that are gonna cause that VO2 to drift, okay? Where now you have to use more oxygen than you normally would do during exercise. So give me an example of that. Can you say it again? So, so let's say that you're this. This is if we were to compare this one. You can, let me get rid of all this stuff. The writing on the wall. Here. So now let's compare A. This one over here. Okay. So this would be an exercise a condition, and we did all of these exercise intensities: 50, 100, 150, 200. 250, got this VO2, oxygen update. And now, let's say we did this in this scenario here. Why would you see higher values? So you're seeing in uh, the 150 and 200 stages specifically, you're seeing the values shift up. <coughs> and so you see this higher level of use of oxygen here by the shaded area. What would cause it? Why didn't we see it in the other one, though, Austin? So what is different about this compared to <coughs> this? So if that's the case, why didn't 200 uh, watts elicit that response to begin with? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So something is now causing that to use more oxygen. So, resistance, maybe? So think about what we use oxygen for. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use oxygen to convert it to ATP mm -hmm. so that we can use it for energy, right? So based upon this, we're saying now in this scenario, figure 5.3b is we had a shift there that now if we're using more oxygen, what are we using? More energy. So what are some things we might have to do that would need energy. So the exercise is staying the same, but we're using more oxygen. So what, what factors could have changed? The energy systems. Why would the energy systems change? Mm -hmm. Type of exercise. So exercise type is the same. It's mm -hmm. still exercising at 200 watts, 150 watts on an exercise ergometer. What are some other things that could change? Why would your heart beat faster um, compared to those two conditions? Ah. What did you say, Lance? Why did you not get an adrenaline rush on the first one? Somebody scary walking. <laughs> Lance made a comment. 
What would you say, Lance? Uh, the environment. Environment. Let's say what? I was going to say like heat. Maybe. Heat. That's exactly <laughs> right. So now if we put heat into the exchange or into this mix, what do we now have to do? Now we're exercising in a hot environment, so we're still doing the same muscle, skeletal muscle work, still going to use that oxygen, but now what do we have to do? We have to dissipate heat. So what are we going to do? Sweat. Sweat. Exactly. We've got to send blood flow to the skin. We've got to start the sweat gland sweating. Okay. Then we've got to evaporate that sweat to dissipate that heat. Does that happen just, let's do it. No, it takes energy, doesn't it? So yeah. now, in addition to that skeletal work, we now have to do other things. The body's doing other things that we have to fuel. And so if you put heat into this, now your body is going to use more oxygen and more energy because there's other processes that are involved that weren't in here as opposed to just a scary guy walking in and shooting your adrenaline up, okay? <laughs> does that make sense? So does, does uh, sweating, does that burn more calories? So you were to exercise in the cold and you wore a lot of like thick clothing versus... So, <laughs> so it depends on, if you, so if you're exercising in thick clothing, and you're outside, so are you going to heat up more with the thick clothing compared <coughs> to the other clothing? So is your goal to burn more calories, would you want to do it just with exercise or would you want to do it maybe and add a, another factor? In, like a, let's say, like wrestlers will do that, they put in, so would that burn more calories? I think so. It, it would, yeah. it definitely would, but at what cost? So. What's your goal? So those people that put those sweatsuits on, they're trying to lose weight to get to a weight category. What you end up doing is you're not burning more calories, you're losing more water, so they're dehydrated when you go way in. Yeah. If you ever watch a wrestler that has done that, they'll go and then they just pound fluids and they get, wow. get it back. And so the process of losing that fluids is, can be very problematic, and that's why you don't have these vinyl suits in They don't let you do that. It's because what, these, what they were doing was these athletes were coming very hydrated and that would cause physiological problems and so you see so, Conor yeah. McGregor before the uh, Joe cool. Aldo that Probably fight spitting during, in the, bucket or something. during the way it, did you see it it looked so bad mm -hmm. well, who is it uh, I wanted to get to see but it almost died like a month ago so that's what From they to get that weight cutting yeah. weight like I used to when you know I was in high school we had our wrestling team used to be in, they had a room specifically that was jacked up heat-wise, then they'd be in there in these uh, vinyl suits, and then they'd be spitting saliva into buckets to get rid of any fluid that they could get right. so they could make a way. Yeah. That's gross. Crazy. Nut stuff. But yeah, so anytime that you now have more physiological processes that are running, you're going to have to put energy into this. So that's what it looks like if you're in a hot environment, what if you're not wearing like the clothing and you're in a cold environment, you look similar? So it depends on now if you're, are you going to try to, if we, in a cold environment, what would be your response to a cold environment? Shivering. So it's shivering and heating up. So um, the other thing that it does is it vasoconstricts to mm -hmm. your extremities so that you're mm -hmm. less exposed. So is that a good thing during exercise? No, you're now shunt blood away from your arms and legs that you're trying mm -hmm. to exercise. No. So one of the things, this is an interesting concept that goes back to biathlon. Is, so they, they're exercising, they're skiing like this, and then you see them come in, and you see the person will come in and go like this with their shooting hand. What are they trying to do? Warm it up. Trying to warm it up because they've been skiing, and blood flow is going away from their finger that they now have to get and shoot with it. And so, so you, they're trying to get warm blood down there into their lower extremities because their body is trying to minimize blood flow to those lower extremities so that they can keep heat within the central core. So exercising in the cold is an interesting phenomenon because you're trying to send blood to working muscles in your extremities and your body's saying, it is freezing ass cold here. I would like to keep that blood in the central circulation. <laughs> those don't work well. Yeah. And so now, maybe it's compromising it by saying, well, you don't look like you're using your hands that much. You're just kind of strapping the poles on there. So now blood is not going to your hands. But now you got to get your gun off of your back and be very fine movement pulling the trigger. If you got a clump of ice hand on there, but you're pulling the trigger like this, 
your gun and shoot and you're not <laughs> shot out of your yeah. pocket. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it was minus 16 degrees, <coughs> minus 16 degrees Celsius. And so that's freezing. When you do yeah. it with Celsius, that's like crazy cold. Yeah, so it, I mean, it's really cold because you're. What does that convert to? When? It's like Jesus. Yeah. I mean, that was really quick. Huh? Yeah. She, she, yeah. She's the resident Canadian. Man. She's the resident Canadian. She's the resident Canadian. You should have seen her going from leader to middle leader yesterday. She's like, just like boom, boom. Yeah. That's pretty hard. I would expect you guys to know. So, so energy expenditure during maximal aerobic exercise, VO2 max, okay? Point at which the O2 consumption doesn't go up with further increases in exercise intensity. Best single measure of aerobic fitness. It is a measure of aerobic fitness. Is it the best one? No. Is it going to, uh, and this is the key here, is it going to predict endurance performance? If you have the highest VO2 in class, are you going to be the guy that wins the gold medal in biathlon? Not necessarily because you're so fit when you can't shoot worth crap. So and VO2 probably has very little with your shooting expertise. And so that's what you have is a lot of these athletes will be their great cross-country skiers and they'll go, hey, I'm going to come over and be a biathlon guy now. Can't shoot worth a crap. So you're not really a good biathlon. <laughs> so, okay. Training. Obviously training is going to impact that. So if you are... Uh, aerobically training, you can increase your VO2 max, but again, it's going to plateau, usually about 8 to 12 weeks of the training, depending upon the training that you're doing. You're not going to get much improvement in it because you've reached the physiological ceiling of your body, okay? Well, you can do maybe some other things. So, if you think about some of these elite athletes, they have like, immense VO2. So, what's the highest VO2 recorded in um, scientific literature? 72. Let's go with mLs per kg per minute. How does that sound? Give me a value in mLs per kg. Anna, what do you think? Highest VO2, mLs per kg oh, per minute. Man. Okay. mLs per kg per minute? Or are you talking about liters per minute? If it's mLs, 3.5 is rest. 5.1, no, it's not going to be very good. Yeah. No. So, give me another number. Still not very good. Austin, you were at like 6. Yeah. Yeah, your VO2, I don't know what your VO2s were. What were you, yeah, what were your VO2s? Jeez. 8.1. You're in terrible shape. That's your VO2 max. You're not much above heart failure. Yeah. Give me an hour, Carmen. Hit me. 90. 90? 90? Wait. I. 60. 